Welcome to Creekside Chat, everybody. I'm Sean Langani, Vice President of Diamond Creek Farm, alongside the President and Founder, Adam Bowden. Yeah, welcome. Um, I think this is the only podcast shot in Stallion Barn right now. It's pretty neat. That the we've house got that Jim Pan built. The house that Jim Pan built. We got yearlings out front. We've got Jim Pan stall just to our left. We are literally in our stallion barn. And with the help uh, from the folks of PM Advertising, we've upgraded our video audio and we now have a set. Oh, a this studio. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, built right into the barn. Big upgrade, baby. So we're rolling into our third season, technically, and uh, we're going to try to remain monthly, and we'll be on your YouTube as well as uh, podcast form. Yeah. So talk about some of these format changes, how we're kind of shaking it up this season. I think we brought, like, education was was the primary uh, topic last time, but I think we're going to peel it back, and we're going to, you know, talk, you and I, and we'll, we'll have some guests on here and there, but uh, overall, a lot more conversational. Yeah, new for us. We're excited about it. Hopefully you all like it. Uh, you're certainly welcome to send in any suggestions or topics, questions. If we uh, if we deem them worthy, we may address them. Uh, you can send those to caroline at diamondcreekfarm.com. So with that, uh, let's just roll right in and talk about um, what's going on. Uh, we kind of finished up breeding season, and now we finally got into race season. I know. Thank God. It's such a slow time, like race-wise. You know, breeding season's great. You know, it's yeah. six months of just nose to the grindstone, but, you know, I miss the racing. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, uh, we're going to get into our first segment, Behind the Barn Door, where we'll get into some Diamond Creek news and uh, what's going on with us and our operation. And uh, we'll plan to introduce our intentions to invade a new continent. Ooh, I like it. It's time to pull back those barn doors. What is going on with Diamond Creek? Well, breeding season's over, right? Transitioning to the next season. Thank the good Lord. <laughs> Gets stressful at times. <laughs> but it's so good, though. That Especially racing's when it's back? over. That, too. Yeah. Good gosh, what a break. It's, I don't know what to do in the winter. I don't either. I just pour myself into breeding season. I, I mean, guess. overnight races are great. Don't get me wrong. No, they're not. But you see in the same horses <laughs> you know, every single week. Yeah. And uh, the stake season brings all, you know, horses coming from here, there, all these wild dynamics. I mean, it's just not comparable. It's yeah, and we haven't had overnight horses in years to root for ourselves. So Makes it hard for yeah, us. Yeah, it's just breeding season, yeah. 100%. But breeding season's over, transitioning to major stake season, as well as before you know it, we'll be prepping yearly. So big transition right now. Absolutely. Plus the kids are out of school. That's it Awful. gets a little wild, uh, yeah. but we're getting through it. Yeah. Yeah. So 14 stallions, 1,500 mares How bred. did we end up with 14? Yeah, hard work. That's a huge <laughs> number. I remember, like, the idea of having 10 or more was like, oh, how could we possibly? Yeah, before we now 14, and we're like, let's ponder. add some more. You just know? ponder. You, start start. With, you got to start with one, right? Yeah, and then you build from there. Yeah. So. so you would ponder... Then a rock and roll dance was next. Yeah, a ponder and then a break, because then I realized right. I totally screwed up. But rock and roll and dance was like a real big deal yeah. when he went to stud. That was like a major, yeah. notable, big, big time, time horse. Big time horse, yeah. And then how long was it till oh, Sweet, Sweet Lou. Lou and Father Patrick? And what then, was that gap, rock and roll dance to Sweet Lou? Uh, one year, two years. Okay, so it really yeah. the train With was Father rolling. Patrick Once you got Sweet Lou, and then there's a bang, yeah. bang, bang, bang. And then, then it's been good. But then here we had three. And yeah. technically syndicate four, because we also did Jim Pan Z, but the three, me and Confederate, Horse of the Year, Tactical Approach, Divisional Horse Trotter of the Year, and Cannibal. Yeah. You know, two of those homebreds in Confederate and Cannibal. So definitely, I mean, without question, the most you've added in one year, the most Diamond Creek's added in one year, the most new we've had to deal with in a breeding season. So what's that? I mean, yeah, and the most fun like. too, right? I mean, yeah. I think this winter was fun for everybody at the end of yeah. the day. So a lot of work, a lot of shares sold, a lot of new clients. But at the end of the day, two homebred stallions that we owned 100% of before the season. Yeah, so, big deal for us. You know, you, you ended up syndicating about 50% of both of our stallion, our homebred stallions, and then a little bit more than 50% of tactical approach. We so, so appreciate everybody's yeah. support. I mean, it, it, the stallions, when you get into stallions, it becomes a village, right? Not Without to quote question. Hillary Clinton, but it really yeah, does take don't. a village to, you know, to support. And yeah. that's what we needed, and that's what we got from everybody, right? And yeah. we all work together, same goal. 
there's ups and downs with the new stallions. Always. Right? Yeah. Figuring out, tweaking little things, their behavior, what they like. And I think we've always been like kind of on the, on the cusp of trying stuff new stuff, right? I mean, we were the first ones to collect the stallion six days a week, right? We were the first ones to do 7 a.m. call-in times. Now it's a little bit more common to see some of that kind of stuff, but, you know, now we've changed a little bit, and we only collected our new stallions four days a week to start mm -hmm. the season. Then we kind of, throughout the season, as they've allowed, we've done more. Yeah. Pregnancy rates, though, you know, obviously we still have some, some mares that are counting days, and we're getting those final pregnancy checks in, but are you pleased? especially speak to the new ones. I mean, the, the proven ones are more or less are more established and more consistent, but. Yeah, but even Sweet Lou this year, like for some reason, like he's coming off maybe his best season, he's got a tremendous a big pregnancy uptick rate. in pregnancy yeah, rate, huge. right? Yeah, huge, down by the seaside, confederate tactical approach. I mean, across the board cannibal. I mean, we're gonna have, we're gonna have 100 plus falls for yeah. six or seven stallions this year, which is, which is great. I mean, we think that's vital, right? You got to have the foals. It's all about numbers. So you can have the starters. Yeah. I mean, you got to have that. Yeah. Uh, it's tough if you have, you know, 30, 40, 50 foals. I mean, on your side, impact. on your side, right? I mean, it was a success. Absolutely. I right. mean, we added in Andrew Kramer as a bloodstock coordinator. Uh, the whole admin team in the, in, especially like our Pennsylvania and Lexington office, our Wellsville, Pennsylvania and Lexington, Kentucky offices were all involved. I mean, I would just say big scale up. I mean, everything became just larger, more hands on deck, um, busy, but fun. Yeah, but we laid out some incentives. Those incentives were met, and then you yeah. guys are going on a trip next year. Yeah, we Tell want us a trip. where you're going. Yeah, the, the group might be split, but it was cool. So we had some sales goals, some really, really high scales goals, and it was going to take a lot of calls and a lot of extra work and all this. And so... You know, we came up with this idea, let's incentivize everybody to put in the extra time and whatnot. And so you to get a choice. You know, if we meet these goals, you could go to the Elite Lop in May. Is it in May or June? Yeah, May? last Sunday yeah. in May. Last Sunday in May in Sweden. Yep. Or you could go to the Prix de Marique in February. No, last Sunday in January. Last Sunday in January. It's going to be very cold. <laughs> in Paris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I so where I, are you going? I'm choosing Paris. Okay. Uh, I really want to see how they market the stallions. I want to go to those stallion farms in France. There's apparently like a stallion exhibition. I mean, that's, that's right, right up, right up what I do. Yeah. So that, that, that's where I'm going to go. But it's going to be cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be quite cold. And then somebody told me you should go to Normandy and yeah. see how they train the horses there on the beach. That's cool. You know, and then on the thoroughbred side, uh, I've always heard of Deauville how they train the horses on the beach there or something to see. I don't know. Maybe we have I'll... a thoroughbred horse that we bred that's now a stallion in France. Oh, I'd love so to go see to him. Go I see do. Him. Onesto. Yeah. Son of Frankel. Owned by some standard bred guys, too. Isn't that wild? Yeah. yeah owned by uh, the Dubois. The Dubois, yeah. yeah. So pretty cool. Very nice cool. Nice little tie in there. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, talking about stallions, you know, they've just completed their breeding season here. And then what's next? Now they're in quarantine on their way to Australia and New Zealand. The three new guys got uh, two new homes. So tactical approach is off to Alabar where we've had uh, just a, a, there's a parade of stallions over the years go Great there. Fun. with Yeah, they, they do everything top notch. And then Cannibal and Confederate are going to a brand new place, Cobbity Equine in Australia. And uh, I mean... They threw, they threw it at us. They put the pitch on us and um, sold themselves. And we sent Caroline Vasquez down there to kind of scope it out, make sure it checked all the boxes for us. And then she went back again and, you know, signed off on it. And, you know, off they're going to go. We're excited that those, those stallions are getting ready to go down there. We wish them a safe journey. And uh, we hope they have a lot of success there. And, and we really encourage the Southern Hemisphere New Zealand, Australia. Oh, they have breeders. to go see them. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. You really do. I mean, that's why we're sending them, right? So you can go see them and you can get fresh semen. Yeah, we debated too yeah. internally about whether we just go with frozen or fresh. Yeah. But I think we've seen over the years that put these horses in front of people and they'll sell themselves. Yeah. I mean, you get your answers, uh, you know, your questions answered, excuse me, down there by, by any of our representatives. But if you want to talk to us about these stallions at all, feel free. Yeah. We, Call away. You know, in America, we often uh, field calls, just general breeding calls. What do you think about this cross? What do you think about yeah. this stallion for this mare? You can, it may be intimidating, but you can just simply call us yeah. or email us. Uh, we're easy to find.
You may not get the answer you want, but you'll get an honest yeah. one. Yeah. DiamondCreekFarm.com. Yeah. You know, if, if there's a stallion that fits your mare that doesn't stand with us, we're likely to recommend that stallion or be part of our recommendation. It's not just. I mean, like I've a, heard you do it. Sometimes I get thing. a little annoyed. <laughs> but at the same time, hey, you're doing right by the stay client. Hungry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, we're all trying to achieve the yeah. same goal. And if, if we were to help you breed a good horse here, maybe you'll come breed with us. I mean, we need you all. We need, we need the breeders. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got to make money. Yeah, the stallion game is is really uh, it's a joint venture. You know, it's not just the stud farm. Between us and who? All these par breeding yeah, partners, right. we call them, yeah. our clients. Yeah. And it's not just the original owners, right? It's all the people that are going to buy shares yeah. and support them for years to come, right? We really appreciate everybody. And uh, if you're listening, uh, feel free to reach out. Any concerns or thoughts or questions you have, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, now that we've kind of got it so involved for years now in the stallion game uh, down under, what's the next evolution? <laughs> what do you call it? An invasion? Invasion, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I, we've been kicking around the idea, or I've been kicking around the idea for a while, but, you know, when people go one direction, I tend to go the other. And so, you know, a lot of mares have been transported from down under to the U.S. for racing purposes. With great success. Yes. Yeah. And and they've been important to really for our racing product, right? Absolutely. Get these right. fast horses into this right. country. And so we're going to try to take like top end American pedigrees and go the other direction. You know, our stallion stand down there. We'll support them in the Southern Hemisphere. But the plan is that we're going to send a couple of mares this first year, but uh, expand to 15 or 20 plus over the next, you know, four or five years. With it's, a long-term plan. It's going to be a challenge, stay. you know, yeah. kind of starting, not necessarily from scratch because we have the stallions, but in the stallion uh, access, but, for, you know, essentially establishing a breeding operation that, that will likely, you know, sell, race, all the things that we do here, more or less, yeah. and starting from square one. Right. And, you know, it'll be it's take a, a while. slightly hands-off approach for us, which will be a new from thing a distance, for us, yeah. right? So, but we're going to try to partner with some, Close friends or yeah, some who are some of the people we're looking people. at partnering with there? Yeah, so the first group of mares will go to Arden Lodge there, John and Judy Stiven, who have been wonderful people and been extremely supportive and generous with their time and energy. I mean, they took care of me the first time I went down there, and Caroline went to um, to be there for Diamonds Day, which is a, a race that we support in the Southern Hemisphere or in the South Island in New Zealand, and they took care of her as well. And they've just been wonderful people. So yeah, they're big behind there. that whole brand uh, SBSR, right? What does that mean? Yeah, Southern bred, Southern reared. Yeah, I think. it's yeah. Uh, become a, a brand for the product, the yearling product, yeah. and the horses that come out of that area. That's just that's a really cool idea. Maybe something that folks in the U.S different areas could maybe even uh, pick up something from. A little bit like sire steaks, but maybe yeah. a little bit even more localized. Very cool. Yeah. All right, let's go into our open bridle segment now where we talk about kind of the rest of the industry, not just Diamond Creek. I'm ready. Yeah, we we'll, might ask you some tough questions like uh, who's the top freshman sire so far with first two-year-olds? Fire away. Put you on the seat. Let's open up this bridle. Give it to me. I'm ready. So you recently went to Goshen. I did. Hall of Fame. So yeah. a little overnight for me because I had to get back for the kids swim championship. So it was an up and back type thing. Leave there at 10 p.m. Show up here at 8 a.m. I don't know how you do that, <laughs> but takeaways from Goshen. So shout out, right? We got some inductees for the first time ever. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, Western Montana ended up as a Hall of Fame broodmare. I mean, the third mare I ever bought, right, for $50,000 and ends up being a creator of $4.2 million and counting in career earnings for offspring. And, I mean, Confederate and Pure Country and Command and everybody else, Ars and Charleston, they all come directly from that mare. So it's pretty cool, pretty special. And then Confederate got the award for Horse of the Year again. I gave a 30-second speech, I think. Uh, it's like nice that. you didn't yeah, take exactly. up everybody's time. <laughs> Dave McDuffie took up. Way too much time. No, and I love good, Dave though. And I got I to gotta give a shout out to Steve Jones. His intro was, was actually super funny yeah. and had the whole place rolling. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I liked that. Uh, actually, a lot of good speeches. Nancy feed. did a good job with Tall Dark Stranger. Got a little emotional. Yeah, I was surprised because I sat with her. 
throughout the night, but definitely was well prepared. And like she said, she didn't get to give the speech because the damn patch was canceled that year. I see. But uh, I think that was her opportunity to kind of shine the light on TDS. Now, they, they recently announced the prospects for the voting right. for the next class. Of the hall of fame and i can i mean bob bonnie's a great friend of mine and has been for a number of years and is well deserved and and then chris Ryder, who i mean you know we've yeah. he's we we've had horses with him he's he's a great, yeah, trainer. great trainer but the the glaring omission is pelling again again and so this is becoming a story it's a whole thing like the the pelling snub yeah so like brett who pelling, did he tick off between brett and nancy we have two of maybe the best trainers in our opinion, in the sport, and both are not in the Hall of Fame. Now, Nancy's on a trajectory that takes her there, no and she's question. She's still young. Yeah, yeah, she'll she'll be there. Yeah. But Pelling's at the point where, like, why? Yeah, and it's, I mean, no I, one has a great reason. No, and, and he has just tons people of support. That feel strongly that maybe he shouldn't yeah. be in there. We're yeah. not really sure why. Yeah, He's he was there. You know, supporting McDuffie. I mean, I mean he, he never talks about it. I don't think I've never heard him no. say a word uh -uh. to his credit. But he's been invaluable to our opera, race stable yeah, operation. Even the sport lately, as a whole, right? Years. He's had two of the last three horse of the year. That's what I was gonna say. Rock and roll Hanover. I mean, you go so back three overall. Yeah, five Meadowlands Pace trophies. I don't know how I mean, many you would breeders think that crowns. Would qualify you right off the bat. Exactly. So surely it's just a matter of time. But for to go away from the sport for a ten year period, yeah. return and then be at the top of your game again. I mean, I don't know who could do that. So yeah. I'm I, like I said during my damn patch speech there, like he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, who I think else it's a shame. Deserves to be in the Hall of Fame since you mentioned that. We would appreciate any and all votes for one pure, pure country. Pure country. Yeah, she's been on the ballot now a couple of years. Yeah, come on, guys. So it's time. She's a generational horse. <laughs> Three-time Dan Patch. Winner. I mean, come on, three-time Dan Patch winner for a pacer. I Let's don't think get it her happens in there. Right. Let's just get it over the hump this year. And we may put out some ads, <laughs> Caroline. Just reminders, <laughs> yeah, exactly. how great she was. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe maybe once she produces uh, what we think she can produce with our new fancy two-year-old named Fusion, by always be Mickey. So far, so good. I mean, his debut, man. Yeah, like pretty. You impressive. hate to get carried away. But and I hate to put anybody on do. the spot, but Vicky Jingra came over to me yeah. after and said, Yannick doesn't talk about two-year-olds very often, but he mentioned him to her and said he, he could be special. So uh, fingers it, crossed. It was, it was astounding. If you didn't see it, I mean, essentially circles the field four or five wide, doesn't have to even get close to another horse and just goes by him making it look easy. I know the race only went in 58, which is kind of slow for Meadowlands qualifiers, yeah. but he came home in 25 and something, and that doesn't happen very often. Pretty yeah. exciting. Well, I think the last horse we had coming home in 25 in baby races might have been... Uh, uh, Confederate. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, exactly. So we're excited about him. Um, you know, a lot of times things don't work out, but he's given us a ton of All the feelings. And, and excitement right yeah. now. So. I mean, it's hard coming off the back of Confederate. And Cannibal and Charleston and that group of horses, and then to have a couple of two-year-olds right now that seem like you know they who could else I'm excited about though is uh, Faze, and she it's F A Z E, not Fozzie Bear or fought the Fawns or whatever. How the many times announcer called her? How many different pronunciations race? did they? <laughs> it's the Fawns. Yeah, I don't know what was happening. It's Faze, F A Z E. <laughs> kind of hard um, to mess that one. She's up. a Sweet Lou filly, yeah. beautiful Sweet Lou filly that we uh, have some partners on and she's a homebred with them. Um, she's out of Darlin' on the beach. Yeah, so you have Fusion and Faze out of Pure Country and Darlin' on the beach that both raced against each other. So that's kind of fun. That is cool. Yeah. Anyway, we need some two-year-olds because our three-year-olds are a bit absent. A work in progress there. <laughs> it's hard to watch all these races that we were so involved in last year just go by on the calendar, you know? I think Casey's kind of filled that role as owner this you year. Think? <laughs> I mean, spotlight on her operation. Whoa. Whew. I mean, Legendary and Ajinsky are legit horses. So, you know, this is open bridle. No topic is out of bounds. Um, it's super early to be talking about freshman sires with first two-year-olds because, I mean, we don't really know much yet. But you've seen a handful. You know, there's a little bit of a sample size. Who do you like? What are you seeing? 
I mean, if you're going to take one of the top two, I think you'd choose Pappy Rob over TDS at this point in the season. Um, you know, a couple of really brilliant two-year-olds have come out that are Pappy Robs. No question. Right. Early. Early. And they looked legit. I mean, they looked they like looked good the at the sale. Yeah. I mean, they had like his look, like that top line. Is it look smooth? Like they look like athletes. And this takes nothing away from TDS, who's right there when you. But well, I think at they're like a little bit bigger horses overall. Yeah. So you know, I always think like, well, they'll come around. You know, late maybe a little bit later. And they were two uh, great good horses ones. too. Yeah. So. And yeah, they so got probably both. both got bred to good mares, although TDS probably got better mares, just being a probably son no of better's question. delight. So he would the have got all those Sun Beach mares. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to have something to say as we go forward. You like anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Like you got to tip your hat to Cattle Wash with a small crop. Yeah. I mean, Sun Beach somewhere, good looking horse, had speed, really good four year old season, maybe a little underrated as a four year old. And then he goes to stud in New Jersey while he's in training. Mm hmm. And so he's got like 50 some foals, but they're everywhere and they're winning. Yeah, they kind of so, dominated the Jersey Sire Stakes entries at least the yeah. first couple of weeks. So, I mean, so what a good start for him. Unbelievable. Yeah. And um, our, our horse, Jim Panzi, um, he's really starting to show that he's got got the got the shooters you know he put us through such a scare at first uh just to, what was it two or three weeks i remember calling like, you oh, being like uh oh crap <laughs> but because you kind of reassured you me had you had gone to, to oak grove talked to some people yeah, and you like, have to relax yeah they need to be ready a little bit later than some of the other right. sire sticks programs so that was really the factor because just here in the last week when they need to start being sharp you're seeing yeah some some real potential stars. I really like that Luna Lovegood. She was good. Philly. Yeah. yeah. And then we bred blank out of by uh, first of all out of cover girl. Right. Who I thought had a really nice late kick in his first baby race. But that Luna Lovegood grew up here too. So that's kind yeah, of Yeah, that is yeah. cool for us. Yeah. Um and then the Vogish out of Jolene Jolene. Oh, brilliant. She could be really something. Yeah. I think we have the slowest one out of Jolene Jolene that we own. Right oh no, now. we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> so the the thing about the chimpanzees everybody's got to keep in mind is there's only like 30 something 30. out there Two. so there's only so big a splash you can make you know and if he if he was to have any sort of star out of a group that small i think you have you have to know it's there but point. like we know i mean the crops get bigger behind this first mm -hmm. group i mean he bred 70 mares the first year and then 100 plus in year two and then since he's bred 120 plus yeah so the crops are getting bigger the and the mares are great i mean yeah. the support we've got from the breeders the first couple of years and then the mares the didn't waivers they yeah. might have gotten better as as time went on yeah a lot of people forget we actually took him to stud a, a, or at least announce him going to stud a bit on the later side that first season you know it really didn't yeah. get going until december and a lot of the top mayors had already been booked, um, but we had tons of great support from the original owners, SRF and Courant, as well as ourselves um, and uh, some other great breeders like Stefan Blasi, Order by Stable, and Hunterton. And Hunterton and They've been a massive The list goes on and on. Is, yeah. So there's a lot of belief, and I think we've all been really pleased and satisfied to see some of these, like Luna Love Goods, Blank, Vogish. Yeah. So. All it's a good, it's a good start, actually. Us. Yeah, I mean, after yeah. the first couple of weeks, it was like, all right, now I feel better about the yeah. whole thing. Horses, that teach you patience <laughs> more than anything else, which I know we all need. How excited, though, will you be next year when the first falls for some of these new stallions hit the ground for us? Oh, my gosh. I'll be on the road, like, constantly. <laughs> if my wife is listening, you're going to have to just figure it out, I guess, because, like, I've got to see as many as possible. You and know, then how do we not buy like the best Confederates or want to buy oh, the be best so hard. Confederates. I mean, we'll, have some, we'll have some yeah. ourselves, yeah. you know, so it, it'll it be new. It'll be a bit of a new experience for us. Oh, it'll be so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun when we stand horses like Seaside and Sweet Lou and horses Absolutely. like that, but when yeah. they're homebreds, got a mares that we bred or, yeah. you know, that we raised. Speaking of Seaside, I got to, I got to break it down here. I got to talk on Seaside. Like you, some of y'all just don't understand that he is sitting on an explosion. And I will stake my reputation on this explosion that's going to happen. Ooh, that's a big statement. It's like what Mark Weaver did with Sweet Lou. Yeah. Like straight up, I don't know if you realize, but the foals on the ground this winter and spring, the ones that just dropped, that crop will be a big deal. They are going to do lots of things. I mean, it's if, just the way it is. If the ones that we have are any indication, 
I mean, yeah. the quality of mares that we bred that year is And whether it's off ours the or others, it's just, it was such a jump in mare quality. I mean, it was like going from, you know, four out of 10 mare book to nine or eight and a half. You know, it was like such a jump, like the the potency. And it looks like he's sitting on you a know good he can two-year-old do, year. You know, yeah, he has a better group of two-year-olds maybe than the, than the group of three-year-olds. Yeah. You know, because we know he can deliver. You know, from his side. I mean, look so. what he's did in his first couple crops. I mean, Sea yeah. Silk and Gulf Shores and Cape Cod Hanover, and then by the missile. Yeah. I mean, so watch out for that. Don't yeah. be sleeping on Seaside. We love Seaside. Yeah, he's a, he's a hell of a hell of a stallion. We like him a lot. With that, we'll move on to our next segment and wrap up with Down the Stretch. All right, it's time to wrap this episode up as we go down the stretch. Rapid fire time. Uh oh. What is your favorite family vacation activity? I'll probably on the boat, water skiing or tubing. Oh, that sounds nice. What about you? I'm a sucker for some good old fashioned board game time. Okay. What board game? I'm the wheeler and dealer. I love Monopoly. Ooh, family drive. Games they, go so I, long. I win. <laughs> they drive them crazy. It takes days, but like if they love me, they'll play. Okay. I'm so, a risk guy, so I'll have to introduce you to that one. I better play. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Uh, this week, you can invite one person in the business to have coffee with. Who would it be? Oh, I'm probably picking Yannick Jingra. Mm. And I'm asking him why he hasn't won the Hamiltonian yet. <laughs> oh, that's true, because he got did he get DQ'd that one time. Hey, he said that's Father Patrick, who made the break, he picked Mission yeah. Brief, I mean, over Pinkman. I mean, yeah, exactly. Year, right? How does he not win? So that's what I'm going to ask Carl. him. What about you? Who are you picking? Oh, um, I... There's one guy that I find fascinating, and it's Frank Baldacino. Um, kind of, you know, can hide behind yeah. the Burke Brigade, yeah. kind of, you know, exist in the periphery sometimes. But, but a great eye for a horse. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, like, he keeps such good tabs on some of the other jurisdictions that I don't, like Canada and Indiana. Yeah. Real close. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Frank and I, I can learn a lot from Frank. I bet you times, could. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we've got uh, one more question, and that's who is your favorite foal on the ground that we have? Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I've seen them, yeah. but I'm going to go with, I'm splitting hairs here. I'm probably choosing a seaside colt out of heart of mine yeah, over a seaside colt out of balance who's first foal. So I'm, I'm torn, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards heart of mine. You, the, yeah, because the heart of mine's got, that's the second foal. Second balance fall. Is the first foal. Yeah. For me, it's a second foal. And it's a Sweet Lou Colt out of Blood Oath, who is a rock and roll dance from the Blood Diamond family. Oh, that sounds familiar. Sweet Lou over dance. Yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a cross. We got another you got great taste. stunning, stunning yeah. individual. I really liked him. I saw him yesterday. Yeah. So with that, we wrapped it up, and we're going to want to tell you what we're doing next month when we get into yearling prep. So we'll probably be talking about a lot of yearling prep items, maybe highlighting some yearlings, talking about the, the Lexington sale coming and the up. the downtime between seasons is small yeah. because here come yearling yeah. seasons. So. That's good for us. And yeah. then we'll recap the Vincent Delaney Memorial. Yeah, we got a group place. of people going over there. Caroline and her team are headed over there. to The UK at yeah. Wolverhampton in August and we're sponsoring a winner's lounge. So we might have some juicy stories from the winner's lounge where people let loose after their big wins. I mean, people drink here, but it's a whole nother level over yeah. there. So yeah, Caroline may stories. have some stories for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With that, we appreciate everybody uh, listening to us and we hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, we'll see thanks. you next time.